is. <laughs> well, a few months ago, when I was trying to decide what this year's Christmas skit would be, there was only one thing that I really had in mind. How do I do this without any guys? <laughs> because I figured, more likely than not, I would not have any guys sign up for the skit. <laughs> Which is fine, it's just a challenge. So I was like, okay, how do we tell a Christmas story with only girls? So I was talking to my family, just kind of bouncing off ideas, and I was like, well, let's, we could do all of the mothers of Jesus, just all of the women named in his genealogy, and they could tell their story leading up to Mary. And I was like, oh, maybe. And then I remembered a skit that my parents did way back when they were helping with youth group in Wyoming. It's called Our Stories Told. And it was an Easter skit, but it was songs and monologues of things and people that were in the Easter story but not normally focused on, like... The tomb had a song, and the angel had a song, and just like all of these different things and people telling their story, their perspective of the story we've heard before. And I've always loved that idea, and so I was like, how do we do that? So I decided to take this story that we've heard so many times, and sometimes when we hear the same story over and over, it can almost lose its freshness, its meaning sometimes. And so I wanted to tell the story that we've heard so many times that is still so alive and so meaningful today in a way that maybe opens our eyes in a different way, telling it from the perspective of the innkeeper's wife and the people of Bethlehem. And of course, these conversations are fictionalized. I have no idea what these people said to each other on a daily basis, and especially on this day of when our Savior was born. But the heart of the story of what happened on that night is true. And that's the story we want to tell today. So without further ado, here is our story born. In the region of Judea, of the nation of Israel, God's chosen people, now under the rule of Caesar Augustus, emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, who has recently called for a census to be taken of all the people under his power. Bethlehem is just one of so many towns being flooded with people returning to their ancestral homes to be registered. I've never seen so many people before. More come in every day from all over Israel. I've been helping my email cook meals. We have two other families staying with us. That means lots of food. And less time to play. This is the first time we've been let out of our chores for a whole week. Come on, Rachel. Hannah, tell your Ema to stop sending people to our inn. We filled the last room this morning. I will. Now, Hannah, I don't want to send anyone else away because your Ema doesn't know to stop sending them to my doorstep. Fine, I'll be right back. We'll meet you at the stables. And what exactly are you going to do at the stable? We only want to give the animals some clovers. Hmm. All right then. But don't try to ride the goats again. You scared them half to death last time. I barely got milk from them for two weeks. We won't. We promise. <sighs> Those girls can be a heap of trouble, but they mean well. Rome's occupation has been such a weight on our people. We Jews seem to be destined to carry the bonds of slavery from one empire to the next. The children may not know what all's going on but I know they feel it the same as the rest of us. I like to let them have their fun while they can. Oh Lord, my God, deliver us. 400 years. Oh God, have you abandoned your people? 400 years with no word from God. We have no hope. Oh Lord God, hear the cries of your people. Save us from our enemies. Save us like you saved our fathers from the hand of the pharaohs of Egypt. And Babylon. And every other nation that has yoked your people into slavery. Our only hope is the coming of the Messiah, the deliverer of Israel. <laughs> oh, God, oh God, send, send your Messiah. Messiah. Do you truly think the Messiah could be coming soon? How much more can we take? If he doesn't come now, we will all be slaughtered by Caesar or Herod. But it has been so long since anywhere has come from prophets or anyone else. But the prophet said the Messiah would come. We must trust that he's coming and will destroy all of our enemies when he does. I dream of the day when we see Rome fall. 
to see our Messiah King on the throne of Israel again, and not some wicked vile. Lower your voice. There are Roman ears everywhere. Herod would have you crucified for saying less than that. Of course. I'm sorry. I should go. Levi will be expecting a supper soon. Shalom, Tabitha. Shalom. Shalom. A man and a woman, they just came into town. I saw them on my way home. The woman is riding a donkey and her belly, she's so big. She must be having her baby soon. They both look so tired. The woman looked over and smiled, even with being so tired. I don't think I'll ever forget that smile. I have to tell the others, Rachel, Hadassah, you'll never guess what I just saw. There's someone sleeping in the stable. What? A man and his wife and their donkey. Wait, whose stable? The innkeepers. Their travels in the census, but there's no more room, so they're sleeping in the stable. And the woman is going to have a baby. Her belly is as big as my ankle. I saw like, them! You did? How? On my way home, the woman, she smiled at me. How did you see them? We were feeding the goats our clovers when they walked in. And they scared Hadassah. No, they did. I told you the goat bit my finger. Hmm, <laughs> sure. Well, they let us feed their donkey, and then we came to find you. Do you think they'll have their baby while they're still here? I don't know, maybe. Oh, I would love to hold a baby again. My brother is too big now. He doesn't like it when I give him hugs. I want to hold a baby too. <laughs> we could ask the woman tomorrow. <laughs> and bring more clovers for the donkeys? Yes, I'll ask my Ema. Me too. Let's ask now and be at the clover patch tomorrow. Shalom, shalom. shalom. We had to send three more families away before supper. I hate to see them without a bed or food for the night, but we are bursting at the seams as it is. A man and his wife came to our door last, just then, and their donkey. They said they've traveled all the way from Nazareth just to register for the census. My dear husband, he let them stay in the barn. It's not great, especially for a woman about to give birth, but it's better than the street. I brought them some bread and soup as supper, and I don't think I've ever seen a brighter smile in my life. Oh. I'm sorry if I woke you. I couldn't sleep. Oh, no. I'll be all right. I'll just be a minute longer. <gasps> Would you look at that? I've never seen such a star before. Hezekiah will be glad for the extra light tonight. My husband's tending his flock with the other shepherds, and the poor light can make it easy to miss a wandering sheep. The strangest thing woke me up. I thought I heard music. The most beautiful music you could ever imagine. And there was this light shining in. But when I opened my eyes, it was gone. Only the star was left. But what a beautiful star. Oh, all right, Caleb. I'm coming. Oh, the baby. The baby, Caleb, Caleb. I didn't have to wait long before I found out what I saw and heard last night. As soon as I fell back asleep, Hezekiah came bursting into the room, shouting and worshiping so loudly, I nearly jumped out of my skin. He said an angel had visited them in the field, saying that Christ has been born, here in Bethlehem. Then a whole army of angels surrounded him, singing praises to God. And when they left, he and the other shepherds found the baby exactly as the angels had told them, wrapped in swaddling cloths and sleeping in a manger. I thought he was crazy. The Messiah being born in a stable, of all places. But there was this look in his eyes. I knew he must be telling the truth. The Savior of Israel, our Messiah, he's finally here. He is so cute, do you think she'll let us hold him again? The whole town has been visiting them for a while now. Maybe we should give them some space. I guess you're right. Have you heard what they've been saying? Do you really think he's the Messiah? But he's just the baby. Isn't the Messiah supposed to take over Rome? But you could feel it when you held him, couldn't you? He's not just a baby. Yeah, and babies grow. You really think he can save us from Rome and everything? I think he's going to save us from so much more than that. And when I went out to check on them in the morning, there he was, the sweetest baby you've ever seen. Mary looked exhausted from the evening, but I don't think anything could have stopped her from holding her son. And you heard what the shepherds saw? A whole host of angels announcing the birth of our king, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. 
I can hardly believe it. Our prayers are finally being answered after all this time. God hasn't forgotten us yet, and he never will. Oh, Mary, we were just talking about you. How are you and the baby doing? Very well, thank you. We had a circumcision yesterday, and he's recovering well. Oh, good. I'm glad you're both doing well. So you've given him his name then? Nine months ago, an angel of the Lord visited me, telling me that I had been chosen by God to conceive by his Holy Spirit and give birth to his son. Me, of all women, God chose me. It's still a little hard to believe sometimes. After I conceived, the angel visited Joseph, my husband, and told, told him what had happened and not to be afraid. Joseph obeyed God and never left my side. Then the angel gave Joseph the name for our son, saying, they shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which means God is with us. My soul magnifies for the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Even under Rome, even in our sin, he's still with us. Yes, we have. A name given from father to father. His name is Jesus. How wonderful. A strong name for a strong boy. Yes, what he's been born to bear, he will need every bit of that strength. But God is with him. God is with us.